Miller knows he's hard to stop. And he likes to make sure opponents know it, too. Reggie Miller, he likes to talk to you. If he get it going, he, he'll talk to you. From the time you come out the locker room, he'll run you right back into it. He sort of gives that body language, like, get off me, you ain't good enough to check me. When we're on the road and he gets on a, on a, on a string of, of hitting shots and he, he talks to fans, he talks to the players, he talks to everybody. That confidence is just part of Miller's supreme mental toughness. Reggie's a fighter and he, and he won't quit. He's a type of player that if you give him an inch, he's going to take five miles. You've got to have a high self-esteem. You've got to believe in your heart in your head and you got to go out and show people situation last night john starts with the headbutt on reggie miller he got a five thousand dollar fine there are certain players in this league folks who get a reputation for being able to get under your skin and reggie miller has become one of those players he and doc rivers mixed it up in the 89 90 season at indiana in fact geez there's chuck person in the middle of that too let's hear from doc He's a talker. I mean, I've had a one incident with Reggie six or seven years ago in Atlanta. Uh, actually, we had a time on the coach told us to go after him, and, and we did. Sorry, Coach Rotella. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's the way he is. And in the playoffs, you just, we just have to, uh, you know, the best way to get back is by beating him. Three, Earlier this season, Reggie Miller, Michael Jordan, we all remember this at Market Square Arena, the bump, and then they square off, the eye gouging, punches thrown. Here's Pat Riley. Reggie Miller is the, a great, great basketball player. But if you stop and think, he's been the only player that ever got Michael Jordan ejected. <laughs> so there's got, there ain't a better talker around than Reggie Miller if he can take the best player and most disciplined player in the league and get him upset. He was talking uh, in game three, you know, but that didn't bother me at all. It was just, you know, when somebody starts to uh, take cheap, uh, cheap shots on you, then, uh, you know, you can only take so much. What did your teammates tell you at the court when you walked off? <laughs> they told me it was uh, a bad move on my part, which it was. And uh, I accept the blame, and, uh, you know, but we have to deal with it and, and move on. I don't think I, I did anything to John to make him mad. I think something happened earlier in the day. Maybe room service was late or something, or something like that. But I don't think it was what, <laughs> between him and I, I don't think that's what made him upset. He never stops talking, and even in the locker room. I mean, he's making light of the thing. And I mean, how do, what's the player's viewpoint? What did you think when you saw that happen last night? Well, I tell you, Reggie, after the game, he said he thought Starks ordered uh, Reggie Miller doll, and, and, then, and they didn't give it to him so he can stick the pins in it so Reggie wouldn't show up. Obviously, <laughs> it didn't work. Reggie showed up. Starks didn't. And that, they say, is that. The other side of trash talk, though, is being able to take it and not letting somebody ruffle your feathers and not hurting your team like John Starks did. He, he lost it and went after him. Well, John Starks is one of the frontline players, and for them to win against the Pacers, he has to be there. He has to score 20 to 30 points for them to be successful. If he's not there, I think it's going to be a game five if he doesn't show up and play well. Reggie Miller does a lot of talking. I like to, you know, tell guys um, if their games were sold in the store, uh, it would be buy one and get one free. You're not a good talk trasher, then you really can't play. You got to have a good game and a good talk game. Reggie Miller does a lot of talking. Look at Reggie, Reggie and Magic can, trying to psych him. You know, Magic, you, you know you can't make these two. You know you can't make it. Ignore him. <laughs> In the last game of the Great Western Forum, Magic needed a couple of free throws to put the ball game away, and Reggie Miller harassed him. <laughs> what are you saying to him? Well, see, you know, Magic and I are good friends, and, you know, they needed those two free throws to win the game, and I was just trying to get in his ear, trying to distract him a little bit. So I told him, you know, if he misses one of these games, you know I'm going to put the game on ice with the three, and he just started laughing. <laughs> Lakers and the Pacers last minute a game at the Staples Center in Los Angeles. Kobe Bryant and Reggie Miller came to fisticuffs after after the final buzzer, the two landing on the scorer's table near the Pacers bench. Well, they've since made up, but that added a bit of intrigue when the squads clashed on Tuesday. Take is led by 17 at the break and kept it going after Bryant hits the three and talks trash with Reggie Miller. Miller answers with a great play of his own, draining the three to make his point. But Kobe and the Lakers would have the last laugh. Bryant with the jam as the Pacers' misery on the road continues.
Responding to Fortson's rough housing, Shaq said legends don't retaliate to average high school players, and he is an average high school player. So what does a player do to respond to an opponent like Reggie Miller? In Kobe's case, punches are thrown, games are missed. For Bryant, there's more to this than fisticuffs. There's competitive fire. And as contrary as it seems, Shelly Smith reports Kobe may be taking his place among the game's elite. Anxious public wanting to know what has caused the young superstar to resort to hardcore violence. I mean, you guys keep talking about this incident like it's damn Mike Tyson and Holyfield. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, we had a little squabble and that's it. Not like I bit the guy's ear off. <laughs> <laughs> or like he and Samaki haven't kissed and made up. So I think everybody's kind of overanalyzing things. I mean, a fight is a fight, period. I mean, fights happen. <laughs> you move on to the next day and that's it. Fights do happen and have always happened in this league, even among the best. I know we don't like to promote fighting, but some of the best fights have been by the greatest players that's ever played this game. Mike and Reggie, um, Dr. J, you know, Bird. Magic Johnson fought Kevin Johnson. Isaiah Thomas fought his teammate Bill Lambeer, who fought Charles Barkley, who fought Shaq, who punched Eric Montross and Brad Miller, who now plays on the same team as Reggie Miller, who scrapped with Derek Coleman, Charles Smith, and Frank Rakowski before taking on Kobe. Well, Reggie is the guy who's always talked a lot throughout his career and um, uh, you know it was unfortunate but you know I can see you know uh, Kobe being very competitive uh, uh, like he is uh, so it just lost to his for a moment. Michael Jordan once punched one of his teammates Steve Kerr during a practice and took on Reggie Miller too. In a weird way, it's almost like you joined an elite group of guys who have, mm -hmm. you know, taken a swing at someone. <laughs> Especially Reggie, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, he has a lot of enemies. And uh, that right now, is, in some cases, has been a little too much. Now the hoops. Nets and Pacers. This, of course, to decide playoff seating. Isaiah Thomas and company trying to get the three. Reggie Miller knocked down hard by Jason Collins. Continuing some bad blood between these teams. Collins called for the flagrant. Reggie stunned, down for about two and a half minutes, stays in the game. Collins sent for ejection. Wonder if there'll be a spillover suspension for the playoff. Gentlemen, trust me, like you've never seen him before. That's all I'm saying. Third quarter tied at 50. Reggie, hard foul by Jason Collins. Wait, there's a history here. Yeah, there's some bad blood, obviously, after the first round uh, playoff series last season. And suddenly, Ron Artest is no longer relaxed. He is ready to roll. And there you see it one more time. Cooler heads prevail. Fourth the fans are derisively chanting for something, and oh, they give it they Miller give it pointing at DeRosa. They give a T to, to Miller on the end of that. Well, Reggie taking advantage of his position, senatorial, and here's a little bit of discard. Allen got the hand in. He is tough to guard. And Reggie earned a tee, Bill, in his farewell game in the regular season. And I'm thinking to myself, now he can't get tossed in his own farewell game, right? <laughs> oh, no, he really don't. Yeah, he can get tossed here if he's not careful. 9-22 magic in the second quarter. The NBA continues to review the videotapes. Of last night's Michael Jordan, Reggie Miller set to in the Bulls win at Indiana. Yes, it was an absolute travesty that Jordan was not ejected for scratching Miller's face and punching him. And yet Miller and Pacers coach Bob Hill were kicked out of the game. The bottom line in this whole thing is some of these players have become so commercialized, they've become bigger than the league in, in some instances. And uh, you know, even no matter how much they find Michael Jordan, he makes more than all the officials together from his Nike contract. So well, you know, what's it, you know, he needs to get rid of some of it anyway. So it's a, you know, he'll probably they'll probably let him write it off. We're talking about what took place last night of the game against the Indiana Pacers, Michael Jordan and Reggie Miller going at each other and Reggie Miller was thrown out as was Indiana coach Bob Hill Michael Jordan was not and that's why Bob Hill slammed his footboard down that happened in Indiana and now Miller comes back in for George McLeod there's Reggie Miller you can tell the look on Phil Jackson's face he does not like what he sees in this third quarter away from the ball Miller goes down Cartwright. Foul coming up on Bill. It's his third, fourth on the team.
All right, Mitchell inbounding. Richardson. Reggie Miller with a quick release. Reggie had a quiet first half. He can't guard Sprewell nearly as well as Sprewell can guard him. No, and the big advantage Latrell Sprewell has is he will get a lot of points in the open court, fast break opportunities, and score in a different fashion than Reggie. Reggie does it in the half-court set when he runs off the one and two picks. Technical foul. Spree. Sprewell got one, and uh, a technical has also been called. And the technicals on Reggie Miller. That's what I thought. Let's, Let's take a look and see. There's no talking. It's just physical. There's the bump. Now we're going to see a little retaliation. Wasn't much retaliation. There may have been something before that from Reggie, but you know, they're, they're competitors. It's, it's very natural. And you know what? Reggie Miller, 0 for 3. You get a little frustrated. They're working at both ends. I love it. Uh, Speaking of edgy, we also know all too well that Spike Lee is a basketball fan, a Knicks fanatic to be exact. We've witnessed his antics and frustrations courtside for years. We're calling him Crooklyn Choklin after Reggie made that, <laughs> that disparaging in my direction. But, uh, ihres Teams. Ja, da gibt's noch ein Geschenk. Für Spike Lee, den schon angesprochenen Regisseur, Reggie Miller und Spike Lee, mittlerweile ganz gute Freunde geworden. 39 Jahre alt ist er geworden. Sein neuer Film, Girl Six, kommt auch bald in unsere Kinos. Da spielt nicht Reggie Miller mit, sondern Madonna. Ja, für I hear, you know, who were on the sidelines and all this. I'm like, okay. I'm gonna try to shoot this ball every single time just to make a point. Taunting Spike. It was just like, he just snapped, and, you know, grabbed his private, you know, it was very public, I mean, it was, everybody saw it, and, and then he did that. I'm on the front page, me being blamed for the loss. Thanks, Paul. And that game five back in Portland is Tuesday night. Now, turning to the Philadelphia Indiana series. Today, the NBA issued suspensions for yesterday's altercation between the Pacers' Reggie Miller and the Sixers' Matt Geiger. Miller received a one game suspension and $5,000 fine. For Geiger, a two game suspension and $20,000 fine. In addition, the league fined the Sixers' organization $50,000. Earlier, we got reaction from Indianapolis. If I'm coaching that basketball team, and you tell me that Matt Geiger may be suspended, and Reggie Miller's going to be suspended, and I say, Matt, go do it again. Um, they allowed him to, 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 to be a cheap shot artist, um, to be an enforcer, to create some havoc, and um, get underneath Reggie's skin. They've been really knocking Allen down, and they have been trying to intentionally hurt Allen, but they've been giving aggressive fouls, and we really haven't. Aggressive plays at the ball, and uh, that's what I tried to do, and, and uh, that's why I thought the ruling was a little stiff, but, you know, you, you got to deal with it and then move on. The Pacers lead the series three games to one with game five tomorrow night, eight o'clock tip Eastern time on TBS. But the Bulls then had to chew on some post-game remarks by Indiana's Reggie Miller. Reggie had just lit him up for 40 points and then issued the following statement. 100% bulletin board material here. Definitely off key to the ears of some of those so-called Bulls nobodies. Reggie's remarks were made three weeks ago. As of Thursday, some of the Bulls could still repeat the quotes verbatim. You know, Reggie's always talked a lot, you know, even out on the floor. Uh, you know, it's up to us to, to prove that, uh, that he's wrong in that. It's a knock on our team. And, uh, you know, any time that uh, an individual wants to place that kind of thing, I think he jeopardizes his own professionalism when he does it. Richardson, look out. Miller on the run. Ooh, he goes down awfully, awfully hard. Miller hit the painful hoop. He has four points. You can't say there's Bill getting in. He stops himself, and I, I just don't see that as a flagrant foul. It's, it's unfortunate that it happened, but yeah, it's part of the game. So Miller's Pacers have been knocked down, but repeatedly at critical junctures this postseason, Miller has carried his team. Jackson lost the dribble. Fisher diving to try to save it. 
It's still Pacer ball. And a timeout with 2.49 to play in the third. We've talked about how Jalen Rose is so important for this team. Only 12 in game one. He was upset at himself. He didn't attack enough. Game two, he comes out, has 30 points, gets to the line 14 times, a little jump hook. And he is off and rolling today. His team leads by 13. Jackson and Fisher went down in a scramble for a loose ball in front of the Laker bench. And then, as people moved in, Hugh Evans had to separate things. Here's the ball squirting loose. They dive after it. They award it to Indiana. Look at that. Fisher tried to throw it off Jackson after the play was really dead, and that probably annoyed Mark. And then Reggie Miller and others came over to take a look. Time out, Reggie. Get out of there. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Because I, I don't want nothing happening to you. I don't want nothing happening to you. That's why I'm grabbing you. One versus ten. I got to come over. I got the right guy. <laughs> Good referee in there by Hubert Evans. I remember Ron Harper and Mark Jackson got technicals early in the game. Another technical, either one of those guys, and they're thrown out. So that's good officiating. You don't want something to happen in something like that. But, Bob, again, when a team starts getting in a desperate situation, having to win a basketball game, you see all these emotions start to surface. Larry Bird goes to his bench for the first time in this game. Derek McKee is in. He delivers the pass to Reggie Miller. Miller against Harper. Five seconds on the shot clock. Reggie backs up and fires. You think he likes shooting here at home? He's hit 10 of 18, and he scored 22. The lead is back to 15. And he's buying some time for Jalen Rose right now with McKee. Letting him rest with a little bit of a lead. He'll come back to start the quarter. Ball poked away. Reggie wins the race to it. Pulls up for three. He loves to try and break the opponent's back, just like his coach Larry Bird would do in the middle of a run for the Celtics. They're looking for Shaq to try to stem the tide. Jackson reaches in and commits the foul, trying to help. Well, you call it, though, Bob, when he picks up this loose ball, Reggie's got his eyes on the target. And he's going to come down, and he finds that three-point line, pulls up. Ron Harper has to give him some space, and he knocks in the three, just like his coach used to love that dagger when he got a team on the ropes. And Reggie likes it. You see the little trot back down the floor, his arms in the air, signifying three-point shot. Miller along the baseline. He goes tumbling into the row of photographers and gets cozy with official Bernie Fryer. <laughs> Bernie tried to hold him up, and then Reggie was going down. They both went down together, and you see Ron Harper goes over. Ron Harper's a great sportsman. He asks Reggie, are you okay? He's a competitive guy, but he doesn't want to hurt him. Here's Reggie again, moving without the basketball with a purpose. He wants to score. Fake gets him in the air. Harper hits him. Reggie takes the referee down. Pacers lead by 10. They've got to keep being aggressive. Save it, but into the arms of Perkins. So now in Larry Bird's last final as a coach, first and last, it looks like the Pacers might repeat that Game 5 performance. Reggie Miller was fouled and had a chance at another four-point play. Derek Fisher's going to get a technical, so Reggie Miller, if that's a three-point shot, will shoot four free throws here. question is, was his foot on the line? Take a look here. Was this a three? It looks like he's behind the line. So that's going to be three, and then the technical. So Reggie will shoot four free throws here because he is their best free throw shooter. Fisher was very upset at that call. Jackie Knees rings him up with the tee. What odds do you give me that he makes all four of them? I like his chances here. He's in a great rhythm tonight. So do I, so we have no bet. <laughs> no bet. Now, Bob, it's interesting. In that third period, I said sometimes... You start falling in love with that three-point shot. It can be fool's goal. In that third period, Indiana took only one three. So they started attacking the basket. They did not stay back there and just shoot three-point shots. Very smart. And they obviously believe they can still win this series. Rick Fox had it knocked away by Jalen Rose. Laker ball out of bounds. Boy, Shaq is just not even getting a chance to touch the ball right now. The pace of the game is picked up exactly the way the Pacers want it. Here's another technical foul. 
It looked like Rose gave Fox a little bit of a shoulder, and Fox came back at him. Well, Fox has got to stay away from it. He, he, he's going over and sort of taunting here with Jalen Rose. We'll have to see here as we sort through stuff what the call is exactly going to be. Double technical. Fox and Reggie Miller. And now another technical. Is that going to be on Mark Jackson? Yes, it is. Now, Larry Bird cannot be happy about that. His team is playing so well, they have a 23-point lead. You don't want to emotionally throw a spark into the Lakers right now. The Lakers are really struggling, Bob, to have anything happen. Don't do something here that's going to incite them. More importantly, that if they don't win the game tonight, that they can take back with them at home in game six. The first two technicals would have canceled each other out, but since two of the three were on the Pacers, once they added one on Jackson, actually it was Miller, not Rose, who chucked uh, Fox a little bit, and that's why Reggie got the other technical, and with the extra T on the Pacers, Fox shot it for L.A. O'Neal in a crowd, left hand no, Crozier with the rebound. Reggie Miller for three. Pacers by 25. And Miller has scored 25. I don't know if there's any thought more beautiful in basketball than when a great shooter gets hot. It is so much fun to watch. We saw Bird his career. Now Miller tonight. What a beautiful thing to see. Teams last year, and overall they've been winners of the series, but not by much. Here's a whistle and a foul on Rudgy. First of the night on him. Overall series, Jazz 26, Pacers 22, but the Jazz have won seven straight and 11 of the last 12. Reggie's trying to guard uh, Jeff Hornacek, and he hits him in the head, and the reason there's two foul shots is because the ball is out of bounds. So that's an all of that one. Yeah, that's right. He's got a couple of points. 8-6 basketball game, Indiana. Here's Chris Mullen coming off the pick. He'll miss the shot, but the foul called by Ken Mowers not along the baseline on Hornacek. Technical foul on Hornacek. And what this is about is Reggie, Reggie on the, this end down here when he got slapped in the face was one thing. Now on the other side, these two are hooked up and throwing each other about. And Hornacek is complaining about it and he gets a technical foul. And for quality people, they are. But when they step between those lines out there, they're as mean and rough and tough as any team in the league. Oh, they, they, they're in a conversation now. They, they play very aggressively. They come to play to win and they'll do whatever it takes to win. Seven other games going on around the league tonight. Kevin Madden's doing our halftime hosting. Really with you at halftime, and Reggie hits one from darn near the spectator seats. But it came out of the set offense. It came out of Hornacek. Reggie beat him. Good take to the hole there. When he came back with a great move. Does a good job of getting Jeff Hornacek off balance, then goes to the basket up high before Greg Foster could get. But Reggie Miller is back. You know what the tip off was yesterday? Boy, he had that mouth going to playoff <laughs> level, didn't he? It makes him take more time off the clock, and Atlanta has been struggling to hit from the outside. Like that shot by Long, way off the mark, and the Atlanta foul as Davis pulls down the rebound. Smith commits his first. Uh, Reggie Miller is into the game. He's taken a couple of shots, and I think he feels that uh, he has no more concerns about the eye, makes a steal. They ended up with an easy fast break bucket on that play. Took a pretty good shot from Leitner on the screen. Came off it to make the steal. Jackson lost it. Blaylock leads the Atlanta break. Numbers for the Hawks. Smith spotted in three-point line and gets it. First bucket for Steve Smith. Steve Smith. And Atlanta closes the gap to three. Smith and Miller having a little to say to each other as they go up and down the floor. The ball movement to Smith. And the foul, an offensive foul called on Steve Smith. That's his second foul as he cleared out Reggie Miller. A rocky start for Smith and the Hawks. Reggie looking good.
impact of Reggie Miller works in a lot of ways, and he's gotten Steve Smith very emotional and then attacking him, picks up his second personal foul, and they have more conversation. Whenever Reggie's around, there's a lot of talk, and most of it is designed to get in the opponent's head. He's done his job so far here early against Steve Smith, who's had an outstanding series. Already distracting, Smith so far has hit one of two shots. The Pacers still reeling from that 20-9 run, and uh, Steve Smith and the Hawks, brim full of care. Their thoughts are that they're going to try to come out and punish him, whoever they play foul against Steve Smith. Smith pleads, battling on the boards. Pulled down that key rebound, and here's Reggie Miller. Hammered, and then an elbow to Henderson. That is a technical foul, and Reggie Miller let his emotions get the best of him there. Well, he got whacked across the eye, his goggles went off, and he responded saying, you know, the one thing I don't want to do is get hurt, and he felt that that was unnecessary. Remember the last time we were here? He lost his emotions, got tossed, tossed out of the game against San Antonio when he disagreed with the officials. Strong drive, you got to know you're going to get hit. He gets smacked right across the head and gives a shot. So technical foul called for the elbow. There it is. And Steve Smith at the line for Atlanta. And he gets the roll. So Reggie Miller losing his cool for a moment. I don't think the foul was intentional, but of course he's very sensitive. Well, you, you can't blame him. He's fearful of another right. injury. Uh, the glasses either are not clear, and he wants Mark Jackson to wipe him off. That's what it is. They got fogged up. <laughs> I don't need glasses to shoot, though. So <laughs> clean me up, Mark, and then I can use them at the other end of the floor. I see, he's going to put him back in for this uh, second free throw. Put him back on. He can shoot him blindfolded, I would imagine. Finger roll by Reggie Miller, who has 14 points in this first half. 11 and 7 tenths seconds to go. In the half, Indiana by three. Hopper does not like the hand checking by Miller. You can see on the inbounds, Hopper upset with Miller. Pressure by Eric Harper picking up Reggie Miller, holding him and following what he's supposed to do, but nobody really shows up. And Derek Harper in a foul mood right here. And Reggie Miller on this ensuing inbound play, a little touchy. Derek Harper trying to knock it off, doesn't like it, although the pressure by Miller is not that hard. Harper is still upset the fact that Reggie curled on him and got that lay-in. And as these two part, going to the locker room for halftime, they have some nasty words for each yes, other. Yes, and earlier Charles Oakley and Antonio Davis got involved. Let's go to Ahmad with Indiana coach Larry Brown. All right. So the Pacers now lead by four. And Harper, Reggie Miller continuing the chatter with just under three minutes to go in the fourth. So Hopper called for his fourth. And again, they continued to talk as they were coming down to that end of the floor. And Reggie Miller really was working Harper over, getting open and putting up the shot as Harper once again tries to challenge that shot that clearly catches Reggie Miller on the right hip. And you can't be putting a normal 91% free throw shooter on the line as they're kind of smiling and who knows what they're saying at this particular point. It was nasty at the end of the first half. This looks like it's a, a good nature right now, but you don't want to be fooling with this stuff. Who knows what the officials are going to call. You don't want to, in a close ball game, you don't want to give up an extra free throw with a technical foul for Tony. Wolfman out of the pack, leading Miller. And Miller fouled by Hopper. And they have words. Miller immediately kept away by Antonio Davis. And let's see what the call is. Personal foul. Number five on Hopper. The Pacers calling for a flagrant. Well, Reggie Miller going in. Derek Harper is actually going to get both hands on this basketball. He hit the top of the head of Reggie Miller, and that's where the foul occurred. But Derek Harper does try to play the ball here, and that's why the officials did not call a flagrant foul. 
Reggie Miller spending much time at the line. 13 of 15 from the foul line. And now Hopper and Workman, who had some testy moments in the final game between these two clubs during the regular season, are chatting away. So things have picked up. This was a very quiet series up until today as the Pacers try to tie the series at two. Reggie Miller hits the free throw and then stares at Derek Hopper. Indiana leads by seven. 2.20. Walker rolling into the paint and rolls in that hook shot. He is very good when he's dancing. He doesn't need music either, Mark. He hasn't okay. dusted off the shimmy yet. No, not yet. <laughs> That's done. And I look at the full court pressure. They're going for it early here. 24-point lead in game one here for the Boston Celtics over the Indiana Pacers. I'm Mark Jones along with Bill Rafferty, and that's going to be a hold against Tony Allen. And actually, the fans are derisively chanting for something, and oh, they give it, they Miller give it pointing at DeRosa. They give a T to, to Miller on the end of that. Well, Reggie taking advantage of his position, senatorial, and here's a little bit of discard. Allen got the hand in. He is tough to guard. And Reggie earned a T, Bill, in his farewell game in the regular season. And I'm thinking to myself, now he can't get tossed in his own farewell game, right? <laughs> oh, no, he don't. Yeah, but he can get tossed here if he's not careful. They really, you know, it's interesting when we heard the Carla talk about bringing O'Neal back. Now you change some looks. They're really out of rhythm. You get that feeling? Yeah. On the offensive end? You're not going to be as aggressive if you're O'Neal coming over to help or coming over to block a shot because you know that you've got to restrict your, your, your arm. Now on Tony Allen, you know, right here, Tony Allen, he's got his hands full. Like we said in the first half, you let a guy like Reggie Miller get going, and you got a problem. Right now, he's just at, he's at Reggie Miller's mercy. And as, as he came back down this time, Tony picks up a cheap foul. So he's, Reggie Miller's got it going right now. But Tony shouldn't feel bad. A lot of guys in this league been in this match for over 18 years. Jackson in and out, and Ray from the France has been quiet tonight. He handles the rebound. Gary Payton pushing. Where Gary's at his best. Shot goes up. Tony Allen. And, and see, that's cheap. That to me, that that's a rookie call. This is a call that you can't tell me. You cannot tell me if Reggie, if Reggie Miller gets away with tipping this ball in right here, which Reggie hadn't gotten up this high in a few years, that <laughs> we've been going the other way. Well, you can see the expression on Doc's face yeah. with that because he doesn't want that to happen. You don't want to get him excited. Yeah. Reggie knows how to bait you into anything he can bait you yeah. into. Reggie, Red, like we said, Red, Tony Allen right now is just at Reggie Miller, Reggie Miller's mercy. Doc looked like he caught a cramp in his face on that. <laughs> Antoine Walker, the veteran, <laughs> talking with Scott Wall, and as Doc Rivers told us, Tony Allen can get caught up in his emotions. He loves spirit, but you've got to control it. And that's what Doc was saying, that he loves his spirit, but you've got to be careful. Comes back, denies it. And last touch by Tony Allen in this two-point game. Reggie Miller tonight, 21 points, and the rest of the team, 29. Another magical night in the postseason for Reggie Miller. He is in the works in his playoff career. He averages 21.2, and Miller once again in front of the Celtic bench. I'm going to repeat it again. Excuse yeah. me, Max. Go ahead. What signs did he see that told him that he should retire? Well, I, like I said, when I saw Reggie push off to get open right there, two words came through my mind. Too late. Oh, my and goodness. it was too late the second he made his move. Up in the air and a foul on Reggie Miller. You know, you know, this is the, the old it's the old pick the picker play. Reggie Miller right here. He knows he's got it going. He Tony Allen was too late from the time he let Reggie Miller go. Parker forces it again. Duncan stripped. Duncan wanted a foul, but the pace of deep ball. Oh, Turkle hammered Reggie Miller. 
Here comes Parker inside. A wild shot won't go. <laughs> and finally a whistle. <laughs> Boy, this really getting very physical. And that one's going to go against San Antonio. <laughs> Duncan, Duncan. About seven guys are limping right now. <laughs> Things have gotten a little out of control here. Reggie Miller races back and breaks up this fast break. Poor spacing by the Spurs. And then when Reggie went up the court, it just ran him over. So Duncan picking up just his first foul. And we'll call timeout. The San Antonio Spurs battled back from 15 down early. They went up by as many as nine. But here in the fourth quarter, it's been all Indiana. They lead by nine with 316 to play. And trail by nine. As you see, each team with timeouts. Meanwhile, Reggie Miller involved in just about everything tonight. Watch him bring the ball up, got hit, and he discussed it with Jack Neese. I love the ball. It went up in the air and hit the ball. And you run into it. I love the air. I said, I, you were, he went up in the air and deflected the ball, and your momentum carried you hit it. He didn't jump on you. No, no, that's an explanation. Didn't like it, but Jack Neese. That sounded like you and me. <laughs> then how can two people see the same play so differently? <laughs> Meanwhile, people around here talk about me as I'm some like a boogeyman in the playgrounds or something, that I'm some myth or something, and I come up with all these plays, but I couldn't come up with the big one. And, uh, you know, I made two critical mistakes tonight, which, you know, I really feel I cost us the game. I never should have threw the ball to Kevin Ollie even though he had an open shot, the one he air balled, and I never should have gave the ball to Jermaine O'Neal. I should just laid him off and took it myself. So if anyone's to blame, it's me because I never should have gave him the ball. And looking down the tape, you make the right play, yes, but sometimes you got to be a little selfish, and I should have been selfish and not put them in that kind of position. like being on stage, you know, you like Michael Jackson. Miller, a bomb for three, got it! It's filling it right now. If you're on the opposing team and you got Reggie Miller staring you down, it's a scary feeling because you know he's, he's got a nose for making a big shot. A pitch out to Miller for three. Reggie Miller with a cold-blooded three. And the Indiana Pacers have taken the lead. Back then, was there a, a real rivalry to you guys? I know the fans had rivalries. We didn't like Reggie. <laughs> I didn't like him either. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I didn't like him either. Uh, at that time, because, you know, back then you had to earn your stripes. Right. As a player, as a rookie coming into this league, you had to earn your stripes. Nothing was given to you. It's a little different now, uh, being a young player, but back then, you literally had to pretty much fight your way into this league. And so, some guys probably give you a pass that you're playing against, and some guys don't. You know what I mean? Because they didn't get a pass. Right. And so Reggie was one of those guys. You know what I mean? He didn't get a pass. He literally had to be tough enough to play in this league because obviously he's 6'8", but he wasn't built. Right. You know what I mean? So people didn't think he was tough enough to play in this league, and they would come at him. But he proved that he was tough enough to play in this league. He right. passed the test. Grant in the Laker lineup. Los Angeles has missed its last five shots. And in their largest hole this opening quarter at nine. No, exactly what you don't want. Last game of a six-game roadie. Back-to-back, -back, flying from Miami into here. And get yourself down by double digits in the first quarter. Reggie trying to figure out Jermaine Jones, who is down. He was injured on the play. The Lakers will go four on five here. And a foul on Indiana. We'll stop the clock as uh, now Gary Vini, the athletic trainer for the Lakers, will come check on the uh, injured sixth-year man out of Georgia, Jermaine Jones. Somebody call a timeout. Yeah, 20 oh, taken yeah. by LA. Oh, oh. So Reggie's elbow just busted right across the, the nose. Ouch. So Reggie has gotten Kobe in the jaw, Jermaine Jones in the nose, and he will be checked up. But we have Friday night fights coming up on ESPN2 after our game here tonight. But uh, Reggie has uh, gone with those sharp elbows to the jaw of Bryant and the nose of Jones. Oh, that one hurts. Jermaine Jones doesn't need... Uh, 
Gary Vitti. He needs Freddy Pacheco. Mike, Kobe Bryant just came out and told Joey Crawford and Louis Grill, hey, that's the second time tonight, and it's the second time you're calling a foul in the other direction. What's going on? Our face is not part of the game. We're not fouling with our face, was the direct quote, Mike. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Reggie has drawn three fouls here uh, on the Lakers in the early going. And, you know, he faked out Kobe on one, then picked up the second one the following possession and isolated there on Jermaine Jones. So Reggie will give the elbows a break. Joey in conversation with all the officials. Freddie Jones going to come in for the Pacers. Meet about having 18 small forwards and here are the elbows right here see right there clipped him in the side of the face and right here is just ouch that was a left elbow straight to the nose quick push reggie faking taking and kobe took a shot in the mouth in the process and reggie over there to check him out right away it was accidental but it still hurts two on kobe Oh, Mike, you don't get to the free throw line without knowing how to draw fouls. And he certainly knows how to draw fouls. Elbows are out. If you get a piece of him, he can offensively flop as well as the best of them. And he can get himself. He knows how to get himself to the free throw line. Well, you need Kobe Bryant if you're the Lakers. And you talked about that. The guys in the studio were talking about that on shoot-around. So here you are in a very important game halfway through the first. Kobe took an elbow to the jaw, has two fouls on him, and he's going to come out here halfway through the quarter as Jermaine Jones comes in. So the Lakers, coming. Yeah, the Lakers dealing with tendonitis in his knee, but focused as he goes through his pregame ritual. Let's head back to the heartland where Michelle Tafoya has more on Reggie Miller's pregame ritual. You guys, and it started a long time ago where Reggie would just get in the face of the PR director for the Indiana Pacers. That's David Benner, and he just talks a lot of trash. This happened years ago, and not a single game goes by when Reggie doesn't have that conversation and then turn and drain a shot. He is one of the most superstitious players in the league. There's David Benner, the PR director who bears the brunt of that verbal attack. He also has to hand Reggie a particular glass of soda or juice right before that banter. But Reggie's got a million of them. I asked Rick Carlisle about it. He said, you know, I don't really want to know about the superstitions. I'm sure they're well formulated, but it's best that I just don't know. <laughs> Well, that's like Stevie Wonder said, when you believe in things you don't understand, you suffer. So just <laughs> let it go. Reggie Miller got him off and going today. Hit. One of the greatest shooters ever to put on sneakers. The more the pressure, the higher percentage he shot.